For the publication of my new book, I'm talking to Amanda Short, the artist who created the beautiful painting upon which the cover of the book is based. I'm with Amanda at home. And I have to say, I'm curious as to what your starting point was for this work. Well, I was intrigued when I was reading your book about um, looking the view of um, Boards Hill from uh, Gilbert Murray. And he used to see this every day when he left his house. If he sort of turned round, because it was backing onto the Boards Hill, so he could turn round and see this amazing view. And as you walk down Boards Hill, you see this, uh, this city emerging from all load of greenery and hills and trees and uh, it comes out like an oasis and it must have been an amazing thing and it is still is for people who live on Wars Hill but at the time of course for, for Murray he could just see the medieval city and a bit of Victorian and that's about it. Mm. Mm, that's really wonderful. And I, I, what I really like is the fact that you've managed to incorporate the whole chronological span of my narrative within a single frame. Yes, uh, well I tried. Um, I did try. I, I wanted to see the span and give a sense of how I felt when I'm looking at this view. Uh, which reminded me of when I first went to Venice when I was young and coming from a huge canal that led into the Grand Canal oh, yeah. and you first got that view of this beautiful uh, medieval city and just the light hitting it, everything, and it transported you back in time mm -hmm. to this beautiful, well Venice being medieval but renaissance at the time, city and it, it must, you know, it, it is emotive, you, you get this very emotion when you see it for the first time yeah. and I think it must be a, a similar thing sometimes when you walk down Bulls Hill if you're not a local and you're not used to it and this sort of hits you yeah. and it is, it is just amazing. So it it's opens like, up before you. It does, it opens up before you and you're transported back in time and that's, that's what I wanted to get that sense and then I had to zoom in to this, this kind of motion of these years between the wars, which is your what your book is mainly based on. Yeah, and you've sort of incorporated that sort of partly in the, the sky. Yes, I, 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 I sort of use the sky as a vehicle to take you through the time. And uh, I placed in it, um, a, a, it's a Bristol Scout. Because I did, I looked, I did a bit of research, I looked up and I thought, because I wonder at the end of, of World War I, you would have seen these biplanes, you know, which was the new exciting mode of transport, you know, for the future. It was just incredible. But these biplanes, of course, were used in World War I and the, the uh, fighting at the end of the war. And it turned out that you would have seen them come across Oxford because they had... Uh, they had this airport there, which they recently rediscovered. And uh, oh, wait, where was that? It was near. It's near Wolvercote, um, Port Meadow. And uh, they they found they found the sort of hut, but then got this ma magnetic uh, sort of readings because they couldn't dig it up. They couldn't sort of excavate it. But it was really quite a big deal. Uh, mm. The amount of aircraft they kept there. But they lost 17 people at the end of uh, World War One in fighting in these planes, and they crashed and things like that. They weren't the safest of planes, obviously. It was, it was all very new. But, so. so that's the first. So, so he's, book, he's, in he's a way. flying out of town now. He's, 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 you know, the war's over. He's flying out of town, uh, and he's flying across this very troubled, rather gloomy sky. Of World War One and all the gloom and all the loss, and I was trying to sort of depict that from World War One, and then we move into the 21 years of um, celebration, if you like, between the wars, where people try to make the most of their lives, mm -hmm. thinking there would never be another war, and then then we've got these menacing clouds towards the end of that time, because we got into the sort of 
thirties. Mm. And things and that's also stressing in the again. book. Yeah, you've got this sort of uneasiness yes. and it's also bubbling up again. Yes. So yeah. I sort of put the middle bit and these little fireworks, which were sort of ones that you would have seen in those days, up behind Oxford just to light it up to say this was just that moment in time. It's a sliver of light, yes. I call it in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Changely odd was. Yes. yes. It's amazing. Yes. And for the book itself, we've obviously got a, a, a different sky on the cover. Yes, there's a different sky, not my sky, but it's a different sky because I think they, um, I believe they think it was too busy. I did manage to get uh, them to, okay. to, to, okay. to put that so in. So we've got the text on that. Yes, that's, yes, that's right. right. So it's just because of the text, I think it was too busy for them. Yeah, this is the, the original cover. in all its glory. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I enjoyed doing it. Thank you.